My name is David Crowley. I'm a, a filmmaker from Minnesota, and I've been working on the project Gray State. How people wake up to liberty, and that, that is the term we all use, right? Wake up, because uh, these things go on all around us all the time, and most people know about everything. Any one of these issues, you ask anyone, they've heard about it to some degree, but it requires sort of an awakening context by which they can establish uh, the difference between that reality and the one that they live in. So for me, um, I was in the military from 2000 to 2009 I was stop lost for 15 months I was deployed illegally as a civilian for a while uh, so I know what it's like to be a number on a page and I've seen what our military is capable of when it thinks it's peacekeeping I've seen the division between the military being used as a blunt instrument of foreign policy as it should and being a domestic police force which it shouldn't and so um, I have seen the context I've seen the contrasts between one reality and the other and Basically, it was my military experience that helped me to d decide and value liberty. I mean, liberty is a real thing, <laughs> and uh, it's being threatened, and it's not defined by our creature comforts. There's something. There's some other thing that goes on, and it's it's about freedom, really. And are we free? And once you have that context by which to describe what I call the gray state, that's what the gray state is. Then you can begin to wake up to your reality and say, hey, hey, this stuff isn't right. Yeah, that's so. It's all, it's all research-based. Once you start to open your eyes, read a couple books, Google something. Google any one of these terms that you see in, in Gray State. Uh, FEMA, martial law, uh, RFID chip, uh, the future rise of the patriots. Uh, this stuff is all in there. And it's all widely available. And once you start to decide that this is not just conspiracy and that I should probably pay attention, bam, you're, you're in the world and there's no end to it. And it's that research that said, Someone needs to tell the story, you know? So there has to be a narrative in this, and I'm sure people have tried, and that's why it's taken me two years to sort of condense everything into one storyline, because there's a hundred different ways by which the federal government will end this country. And I had to pick, like, what I thought was the most realistic scenario, and that's kind of what the gray state is. Whatever you were writing it, was there anything that you, you thought, maybe, maybe I should That's a very good question. Uh, well, Anyone who opens their eyes to this material has that month or so when they're just afraid and they go outside and they're like, it's going to happen tomorrow. Look at all these fools. They don't know what's coming. And it's like, you're just afraid of everything. I got over that like everyone else does. And I realized, well, there's, there's some time at least. And so I was able to, you know, bury myself in the film effort and really try to uh, craft that narrative out of the mess that I was researching. Now, do things really scare me about the gray state? Well, hell yes, they do. Now, uh, people, the follow-on question to that typically is, well, why are you making a movie? That's your response to knowing the truth about this awful, dark, crazy world we live in? Well, I think that everyone needs to act within their own capacity. I'm an artist, I'm a storyteller, I'm a filmmaker. So uh, I have to do something, and this is... If telling the story helps people to wake up, and that's what people have largely told me, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm a combat infantry veteran with over five years of service and two deployments. But I'm here speaking today as a filmmaker. I'm the writer and director of the film Gray State. Now, has anyone heard of Gray State? You know, that doesn't surprise me because the trailer racked up nearly 150,000 views in its first week on YouTube. The overwhelmingly positive response to the trailer tells me that for whatever reason, it's something people want to see. Since we began developing the concept two years ago, people have been asking me, you know, what is the Gray State? This is a question whose answer needs no further clarification than for you to look outside your window and observe what your world has become. You may recognize it as the world of financial, or as the world financial prison that has been created by bankers. You may recognize it as a visualization of the uneasy fear you may now have as a police car pulls up behind you. You may recognize it as one quick step away from the pervasive surveillance state in which we now live. In any one of these estimations, you would be correct. In short, the gray state is the culminating manifestation of the darkest trends our negligence and malignancy have to offer. As you watch the trailer, you see that every scene exemplifies something sick about the way our culture has evolved. Every scene is a revealing stab at the innocuous beginnings of a totalitarian police state, suggesting just how our silence and inaction might be rewarded. It is a preview of what happens should the Ron Paul revolution that fire of free thought, roll over and die, and let them have their way with our country. Gray State may be just a movie, but if that's all it really is, then Ron Paul is just another congressman.
If you've already seen the Gray State tra trailer, you'll recognize this tagline. The Second American Revolution may not be remembered. It surprised me how little people question that statement, and not in the way that they usually don't question what they see here. You know, it seems like they, they really get it. They understand that if the frontal attacks on liberty we endure on a day-by-day -day basis ever culminate into a shooting war, then it will result in either a total teardown of our current system of government or a complete eradication of the fundamental idea of freedom. And looking around, you know that, that's, that such a possibility is not far off. The film explores trends like RFID, bio, and nanotechnology. These represent the fusion of authoritarian control and human flesh. And these trends are no longer science fiction. Trends like the slow, systematic takeover of the free exchange of information as foretold by Orwell, also, unfortunately, no longer science fiction. Trends like the slow yielding of our quiet American towns and streets to a choking array of federal surveillance grids, illegal police checkpoints, and literal foreign occupation. Trends like the acceptance of torture as a sanctioned practice, the acceptance that a portion of our children will be siphoned off to be sacrificed in foreign wars, and that the acceptance that this is simply the way things are. The acceptance that some people may be arrested, black bagged, and imprisoned without charges or trial, and that as long as we submit to state authority, continue to yield our liberties, and modify our behavior to fit the mold of federal approval, this unlucky person being dragged away will not be us. And as long as at least we believe our freedoms are not at stake, we'll be allowed to return to the comfortable complacency of our padded, regimented lives. We live in strange times. We share this nation with people who think drinking raw milk is radical behavior. People who think organizing a military stand-down is radical behavior. People who think committing our troops and our resources to more and more undeclared foreign wars with increasingly thin veneers of moral justification is actually patriotism. People who are unfamiliar with interpersonal communication, completely without trust, a sense of community, or allegiance beyond corporate brand loyalty. We live in a society that is fractured, marginalized, and distracted. The film will explore the consequences of this complacency, but also the film will explore the rise of those who did not live their lives asleep. The rise of patriots, those who know that liberty is not given but purchased, and at some point collectively decide that enough is enough. Patriots loyal to the founding principles of this country by which the most successful experiment of liberty in human history has drawn its voice. Backed by the awesome heritage of armed resistance to tyranny, each American can proudly claim, throw off their shackles, and retake their birthright. We are not a nation of sheep who should look at our history with shame and submit to authoritarian rule. The Gray State will tell this story as well. I'm David Crowley. I'm the writer and director of Gray State. And uh, I'm a veteran, I'm a husband, I'm a father, and um, the interesting thing about this material, once you delve into it, is that everyone has to act within their own capacity to express this information. So Gray State has been my effort to kind of draw the human narrative out of all this terrifying information that we see all around us. And uh, I think that's been uh, my responsibility as a filmmaker to kind of craft a human story out of this. And I think what I want to definitely tell your listeners is that Every time you look at some of these things happening, like, why isn't anyone showing this in a film? I mean, that is what I'm doing. That is what Gray State is. Gray State is the Alex Jones film, essentially. But uh, as, as my role as a, as a soldier having to serve in Iraq and Afghanistan, I definitely can see the consequences of these kind of trends playing out and not being corrected. So uh, Gray State definitely shows that. Well, it's fine. Yeah, my name is Danny. Alex, first off, thanks for having us on the show. Uh, I'm an actor, uh, co-creator, and uh, help uh, consult the story for Gray State. Um, I've actually been lecturing on uh, the topic about dealing with uh, FEMA, also Federal Reserve, United Nations, for about five years now across the country. And uh, um, I guess collaborated with David back in 2010 yep. about the information on it, and we both uh, were on the same page about it, and it just kind of spawned. Uh, from there, and ever since then, it's just been a uh, hell of a ride. So, um, it's uh, definitely, instead of just being just an action uh, film, it's definitely more of a narrative film, character-driven piece, and that's what we're uh, sticking to our guns with on it. I think that's an important distinction to make, is that it's not a documentary. Where a documentary will pander, pander to a certain crowd who already subscribes to those beliefs, this is a narrative film. It's a literal movie you're going to go to the theater and see. So just imagine the possibilities there. I mean, Mainstream media, in, in, in effect, has usurped our traditional 
heritage of storytelling as a means of passing on our culture. As an anti-culture, all we have are movies. So the mainstream media, in that usurpation of that, they've been able to dominate what we see and hear and what we pass on to our children. So imagine if we get a film like Grey State showing in a 1984 sort of format certain consequences of a failure to embrace liberty. Well, when Danny came to, came to us and he's like, hey guys, check out FEMA camps, check out these things. And we're like, okay. And then it's like, oh, wow, wow, this is important and we should probably uh, pay attention. <laughs> so, uh, we're, of course, we go about making a film because that's what we do. But uh, my partner Mitch and I run a production company called Hothead Productions. And uh, we do photography, videography, and filmmaking, of course. And so basically, uh, Gray State, while well, you say it looks good, that is essentially cheated, just, be, just out of pocket from Mitch and I's production company, and uh, it's uh, doing what we do best, making films in an independent fashion. So uh, we went through the entire production process for every scene for a trailer. I mean, we had to do location permits and casting and arranging all these resources. But yeah, it was funded. An important distinction to make is that the, the trailer is sort of a Hollywood-style trailer showing a lot of action and stuff, and that's not really what the film is about. The film takes place in, a, in the context of a future societal breakdown, which does parallel reality trends that we see every day. The story itself will, of course, follow a character who goes through a character arc, and it's, it tells a very human story exploring human truths. That's an important distinction to make. This isn't a snuff film. It's not fear propaganda. It's not fear mongering. It is a a human film. So it, it follows a narrative. It, it's really a love story. It, it, it can't be described. It, it, it's almost a, a monster story. movie. It's a love story. It's all yeah. of these things. It's very, very layered. It just, it, it doesn't chronicle the collapse, but it follows characters and what the, uh, the decisions they have to make in the event of a societal, economic collapse, police state, martial law. To be true to reality itself. So it's not necessarily a polarized debate saying, soldiers are bad or soldiers are, are good. We have characters embedded in the film that uh, follow very real decision-making problems. I mean, the scenarios include just a National Guard soldier, am I going to follow my order? And this goes back on like what the conversations we've, we've had with Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keepers. Uh, are, the, are you going to follow orders and round up people and uh, put the gun to the back of the head of the American people? Or are you going to exercise your own moral capabilities and make the right choice? Uh, the soldiers will go through, and the soldiers and police in the film go through that realistically. It's not a polarized thing where we're going to say police and military are bad. Uh, what will happen in the film is uh, the reason we call it gray state, or one of the reasons, is that it's a division of reality. So we have people who are living in the Alex Jones world who know what's going on, and the people who simply don't. And the, the, the description being that it's requiring more and more work to support that illusion. And what will happen when it's finally contested? It's no longer just a luxury to believe in that false world where you just go to your, your job and everything else. The thing is that we, we know that they will not believe it. And that's kind of the striated response we've gotten on the trailer. It's either A, this is awesome and it's almost true, or B, this is a bad, this is, this is not real, and that's why I'm not going to watch the film. And what it does is it shows us how close to reality we're actually getting because it's, it's, it's that emotional knee-jerk response. Because reality is a form of religion for them. And the more you encroach on that, it's more you, you question their morals and ethics and even spiritualism. And it becomes a very, uh, you know, sensitive ground. And the whole entire, the reason why we put the guillotine in it was more of the symbolism behind it going back to a very dark and evil time, um, almost like cultish. Something that they would, they would do because it's symbolic, yeah. it's brutal, and it's efficient. And uh, actually something that happens in the actual Gray State thing is that they're going to start doing, and they're going to start sending you something in the mail saying you have to go operate the guillotine when they round up suspected dissenters and put them in line. The essence of pretty much what they're doing, not going too much on the soapbox, is prepping society uh, to accept oppression as a form of security. And with that, and giving up your liberties and rights on it. And most importantly, is giving up your, this idea of free will and choice and what you actually do with that choice. Um, and for whatever reason, if you're American, this simply does not apply to you, yeah. as if we're somehow immune to the rhythms of history. And Alex, I want to thank you because we owe a lot of the uh, this information coming out because of you and your organization. Yes. A lot of people like to say that, well, you guys are just Alex Jones acolytes, and uh, that makes you bad, and that makes me not want to listen to you. Well, we have nothing to gain from you being right about this, Alex. If, if, if you're right, we're not going to make the film. Yeah, we're, we're screwed. Yeah, but if you're wrong, I mean, why... If we're wrong, we can go on and make films. And have, the scary thing about Gray State is that you're going to have those people who speak out, but they represent a silent majority. The 97% who don't win revolutions, 
Those are the scary ones because the second you challenge their entitlements, like in a scenario the gray state suggests, they're going to revolt. So if, if revolutions are won by the three percent, they're going to they're going to be they're going to be turned on by the ninety seven percent, and that is the real gray state. There yeah. is that the people who are so mind controlled, they don't listen to facts on a reasonable basis, and they deny whatever you say just because. And it, it's and it it's crazy because I've been researching this material since uh, even when I was really really young. Um, and I think just from that, uh, always having the, the questions about situations with government and also with, uh, uh, foreign affairs and foreign policies at the same time, um, to never accept the truth as it is, but always to go on your own, well, in terms of research and whatever the truth is, is going to lie in the individual. It's just our jobs as artists and our responsibility to present the truth and whatever that truth is, is dependent on the interpretation of the individual. That's not something you've seen from art lately. Like yeah. In the 60s, what they did is art represented reality, and they represented the, the zeitgeist of that time. Yeah. We haven't seen that. It was a fantastic move, and it just got shunned, and, and that's what we're... I haven't seen that, that yeah. recently. A great state, I'm not saying it's unique, I'm not saying it's perfect, going back to what you said before. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, with everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're trying to impose martial law the same, the same, the same model that they do overseas, yeah. and... Yeah, we know that, Alex. We know that. What's next? What's next? That's why we're making a film to show the people who otherwise would not be recipients of this message. I mean, we, we were just on a brief note. We were shooting this uh, way before any Occupy Wall Street yeah. came out. Uh, anything from like the NDA ever came out. And when these uh, events started taking place and people started looking at the images and finally saw the trailer, they just started looking at us like, what's next? We, we yeah. don't know. We were just thinking ahead of what would be the worst case scenario and like the scariest thing is to come across visually. The nature of resistance. Resistance is victory. That is a statement that the gray state does a very good job of describing. Even though you may be killed resisting, the act of resistance on a metaphysical level has value. So we can reassign. I mean, it doesn't, it's not about Ron Paul. We know that now. Yeah. It's not about retaking the country and you know persisting in this paradigm. It's about finding out who you are as a person, as a human being, and resisting coercion. In this realm, and also in the other realms, too. And I'll just only hint at that. It, it's a very layered script. It is. This is a film you're going to want to see, because it's everything that Alex says put on screen. Yes. It's going to be so brutal, because we don't pull any punches. This, this is not our, our game to look, pander to the lowest common denominator. We're going to make it as brutal as we possibly can, because that is the reality we're facing. And it's up to the people to help us out. Right, so, so no studio is going to touch this. The neighbors no. tell us they found the bodies of the father, David Crowley, his wife Kamel Crowley, a self-employed dietitian, and the couple's five-year-old daughter. Apple Valley police call it an apparent murder-suicide. Neighbors knew little of the family except for David Crowley's screenwriting ambition. And he he made a movie called Grace Date, and it was about the militarization of the government. Two years ago, Crowley, a military veteran, publicized the yet-to-be-released film on this internet program. Hey Gary, thanks for having us on. Yeah, definitely the Grey State is something that we can turn around and look at, you know, in our own realities. And whatever reality his family faced was hidden from neighbors. A tragic ending that may never be understood. Shock. Shock. You know, that you have something that happens like that next door and you, you know, don't really know when it when it happened you know, i would like to help you guys uh you know get this done but also because i've actually been around hollywood and what goes on there you've got to be careful because 99 percent of the time some big fish will come along claiming they're going to help you and all they'll do is pay you a little money take control of it and then never produce it so uh, if i was you you're going the right way crowdsourcing i would not take any big money or big investors they will kill your film